Hello, hello. Hello, and welcome back. Thanks for being here at 9 a.m., those of you who are. I'm Devin Berkshire. I'm the Director of Conferences and Fieldwide Learning here at TCG. And um, on behalf of the whole conference team, I want to thank you all for being here with us in DC. This is a, a really special conference for me, and not just because this is actually my hometown, although I do love my hometown, DC represent, what's up? Um, but it's also a special conference for me because it's my first in this new role as director. Uh, addressing, <laughs> addressing all of you <laughs> uh, in this, you know, what used to be this patented Kevin E. Moore wakes him up with jokes speaking slot. Uh, it's very exciting. <laughs> but it's also a little uh, bittersweet, and that's because the person who used to have this role left in the midst of the planning process for this conference for an, an amazing new position in the foundation world. Um, I think many of you know what a big impact Dathina McMillan has had on TCG and the national conference and our field. And we know that impact continues at Bloomberg Philanthropies, but we still miss her terribly. She also had a big impact on me personally. And Dathina, where'd you go? Hi. <laughs> uh, it feels a little surreal to stand on the stage and see you out there in the house like some regular old attendee. <sighs> but you will always be more than that here. The conference is different because of you, and we're different because of you. So we're modeling our movement and leading the charge and dancing our conference dances because of you. So please stand so we can all thank Dafina together. Dafina, stand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, now, there's a joke that I named my, my son Diego because he was born the year of the conference in San Diego. <laughs> and I just want to make very clear that my daughter will not be named Washington or DC, even though DC and Diego is kind of catchy. But um, I hope that doesn't disappoint anyone. But um, I'm glad to be here, even though I can't chase after the conference crises at my usual speed. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful because when I hear about all the brave and amazing things you all are creating, and when I get to watch Anna DeVere Smith do what she did last night, um, it gives me hope. You give me hope that Diego and his sister will grow up in a better world and that every kid, even if they're not named after a conference city, can grow up in a world that meets their love with love. So to kick off our morning plenary and to help us celebrate the recipient of the Alan Schneider Director Award, um, please join me in welcoming Charlie Newell, another past recipient of the Schneider Award, as well as the Zelda Fish Handler Award, and another DC local and current artistic director of the Court Theater to the stage. Good morning. Uh, the Alan Schneider Director Award was created in 1984 by TCG, the acting company in SDC, to celebrate Alan's unique contributions to the American theater. A leading director of the works of Samuel Beckett and Edward Albee, Alan directed the world pre American premieres of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Waiting for Godot, and many others. He was also a lifelong advocate for new work, many of which plays we now consider classics of the American theater canon. The Schneider Award was also established in recognition of Alan's lifelong concern for the development of career opportunities for young artists, most especially freelance directors. As Devin said, as one of the sweet 16 previously honored with this award in 1992, I was most grateful that TCG asked me to make this introduction, doubly so, for I was privileged to bask in the fiery cauldron of Alan's process while serving his, his assistant director on Pieces of Eight by the acting company produced by Margot Harley. Tragically, 
This was one of Alan's final directing uh, projects as he was killed by a motorcycle while looking the wrong way in a London crosswalk in 1984. No doubt, he was probably speaking with passionate abandon about whatever play he was working on, and it is this quality of the man that I hope, I wish, I want to share with you. For the Alan Schneider Award honors passion and intensity of its namesake, which found expression through his teaching, and most especially his advocacy of the art firm, having served, amongst many other things, as president of this theater communications group. Finally, the Alan Schneider, uh, 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 I'm so excited <laughs> to do this. What a thrill then to introduce this year's recipient of the Alan Schneider Director Award, Kimberly Senior, for I believe that she beautifully exemplifies the defining qualities of this award. But rather than simply recite for you Kimberly's most impressive resume, you can find it at KimberlySenior.net. That's the first time I've ever done that. Okay. Uh, or through TCG, I thought it best to highlight just a few personal traits of Kimberly, this extraordinary artist. In her new work, here's a quote from the Pulitzer Prize winner playwright Ayad Akhtar. Kimberly often speaks of the genius of, quote, being invisible as her great aspiration, to serve the play. I admire this greatly and feel she lives up to her aspiration, unquote. Well, this quote could be pulled directly from No Author Better Served, the correspondence of Samuel Beckett and Alan Schneider, that singular chronicle of how a director might best serve the needs and intentions of a playwright. In advocacy, at a recent non-equity Jeff Award ceremony in Chicago, Kimberly received a special Jeff, having been nominated by 73 Chicago theater artists. Unheard of. And to quote from the award, Kimberly's most important and lasting legacy in Chicago is the way she has tirelessly championed and fought for many careers other than her own. She smashes glass ceilings, bashes doors down, and then makes damn sure that those, do those doors remain open for others to follow. Finally, intensity. A quote from one of Chicago's leading actresses, Kate Fry. Kimberly achieves a rare balance. She relentlessly explores some of the darkest qualities of human nature, while at the same time engendering a great compassion for people. Well, having known Kimberly for now 20 plus years, I first encountered her aggressive empathy in Court Theater's Artists in Schools program, her students were challenged beyond their self-imposed limitations, and they absolutely loved her for it. I am also astonished at Kimberly's ability to maintain so many longstanding relationships with so many different Chicago organizations. She is more than just a hell of a freelancer. Her energy is boundless, her creativity electric. Just sit with her for a moment, and you'll feel what I mean. So now it's my privilege, my honor, I think it's here, to pull out this lovely award, and by the way, there's a cash, a no strings attached cash award that comes with this wonderful uh, uh, award. Please join me in celebrating this year's recipient of the Alan Schneider Director Award, Kimberly Senior. Thank you for waking up, um, or trying to do that. Um, thank you, Charlie, for that like lovely introduction. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank TCG for even supporting such an award. Setting out as a freelance director isn't a career path where award earning is something that you expect. Uh, the fact that this award even exists is so meaningful to all of us, and TCG has been such a big part of my path from searching for jobs in my like paper copy of Art Search to looking forward to my American Theater Magazine to arrive, what's the play going to be this month? Uh, to the myriad of support and programs available connecting theater artists everywhere. I mean, look around, this is amazing that we are even here. It's been a kind of, this is, this is your life of life in the theater from sure for so many of us and it's just exciting to see us all connected here. Um, I wanna thank the Alan Schneider Award Panel, Kurt Columbus, Robert O'Hara and Laura Penn 
who are a panel of my peers who are each just dynamic luminaries and tremendous sources of inspiration. And my recommenders, Michael Halberstam and Ayad Akhtar, who have been the best art partners a woman could ask for. Uh, I also would like to thank the artistic leaders who have encouraged me to risk often and dream big. In particular, Robert Falls, who nominated me for this award, who inspires me with his effortless leadership and big-hearted passions, and Martha Levy, who is the first person to challenge me to be more, to do more, to say more, and remains my tireless champion. And I want to congratulate my fellow finalists. I hope to stand here as a representative of a huge group of artists who are ready to explore, who are trying to ask the right questions, who are trying to become better listeners. In the New York Times obituary of Alan Schneider, it said, Mr. Schneider defined his area of theatrical concern as unexplored territory. I too have theatrical concern for unexplored territory. That territory involves how are we, American theater makers, going to address the deeply fractured world that we live in, not only in our work, but in the conversations surrounding our work. In working on Disgraced, Ea Doctor's play all over this country, I've got to do seven productions, uh, and I was just saying this morning to somebody that how often do we get to live with a play for five years in our work and what a gift that has been for me. This unexplored territory has become even more clear. It has become a responsibility. The Paris attacks happened on the day of our opening night in Berkeley. At the pre-show dinner, donors and trustees and staff approached me wondering how I would address the attacks. They were looking to me to shed light, to expose, to provoke, to comfort. This tremendous privilege and responsibility suddenly clarified for me. I addressed the attacks in my remarks about the continued terrifying relevance of the play, about the moral imperative to remain vigilant, to talk to each other. After the final bow, we brought up the house lights, the actors silently joined hands and bowed their heads for a moment of silence, and the audience followed suit. In that moment, I vowed to pursue this work. Orlando, Syria, Madrid, Charlie Hebdo, Boston Marathon, Nigerian Schoolgirls, San Bernardino, Sandy Hook Elementary, Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner. All of this has happened in the five years I've been making this play, and this is by no means a complete list. These signs begin to emerge from the map of unexplored territory. We need to make work that demands conversation, that expresses opposing points of view, work that challenges the artist and the audience, work that exposes these dichotomies within us, for within that fissure is where the story lies, all of our stories. Discovering that space and beginning the conversation there from a place of not knowing rather than our expertise. It is time for us to embrace our similarities and then dive into the vast abyss that divides us and see what seeds we can plant there. I now know that mentorship and advocacy are as important as our work is. It is our work. We can and we must build a better world. I would like to thank my children, Noah and Delaney. They inspire me to do better, do more. Let's seize this moment now so that our children can be asking different questions. Being here in DC is, of course, reverberating throughout this conference. The time is now. This is our moment. We must do our job. All voices must be heard, even if we have to sit in or stand up. We are hungry. We have open ears and open hearts and we are concerned about this unexplored territory. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly and Charlie. It's now my pleasure to welcome our next plenary speaker to the stage. John Maida is an American executive spearheading a new convergence across design and technology industries. Named as one of the 75 most influential people of the 21st century by Esquire, Maida draws on his diverse background as an MIT trained engineer, award-winning designer, uh, an organization executive writing celebrated books such as The Laws of Simplicity, Creative Code, and Redesigning Leadership, the latter of which he'll be signing in the bookstore on the break right after this. His TED Talks have received cumulative views of over two million to date, so please join me in welcoming John Maida to the stage. 